60 minutes overtime. The Media Lab started in the 1980s as an attempt to merge computers and the arts. But it has grown explosively, and now today, more than 200 graduate students are bringing their craziest ideas to this place and are given free reign to try to engineer them. There are no rules at the Media Lab. Whatever you can envision pretty much falls under the guidelines of what the MIT Media Lab does. I first heard about this story when a great young producer named Katie Kurvstadt came to my office and said, you won't believe this thing that I found up in Boston at MIT. And I had frankly never heard of it. You look at the things that they accomplished there back in the 1980s, step-by-step -step driving instructions, developing a purpose for the touch screen. I was dying to get in there with Katie and see what they're coming up with for the next generation. What's the largest city in Bulgaria? and what is the population? Arnav Kapoor is a student. He's 23 years old from India. It's really exciting what he's working on. Sophia, 1.1 million. That is correct. This is a device that you put on and it intercepts the electrical signals that your brain is sending to your vocal cords and sends that to a computer. And he gets the answer right in his ear through vibrations. You could be an expert in any subject. Mm -hmm. You have the entire internet in your head. That's the idea. What else should we do besides that? So Scott gets done interviewing Arnav, and uh, we decided to have a little fun. So are you telling me that you can order food without lifting a finger or saying anything? Let's do it, yeah. yeah. We want to order it. Surprise me. And then he says, it's asking, what kind of toppings do you want? <laughs> want cheese pizza? Pepperoni. Let's do some pepperoni pizza. Can it do pepperoni? Let's try. Let's try. <laughs> he brought us out pizzas. Get out of here. And he's like, okay, pizza's on its way. Should be here soon. We didn't really believe him. So we start packing up our gear, and lo and behold, he says, Katie, your pizza's here. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> we got pizza. <laughs> it's pizza delivered without saying a word or lifting a finger. Pretty good turn. The first pizza. How's that? Ordered by no, good. thinking. It's very high tech. He's only been working on it for one year, so I can't imagine what this project will look like in another year. I was in a prosthetics lab where they're working on creating new limbs out of nuts and bolts and connecting them to the nerves and connecting them to the muscles to make them work. It's fascinating stuff. You feel directly connected, huh? Yeah, when I fire a muscle really fast, it makes its full sweep. Hugh Herr is a, a brilliant and charismatic guy who at the age of 17, while pursuing his love of mountain climbing, lost both of his legs. I, I really had a very vague picture of what my future would entail. I remember mo a moment with my father. He knew I wanted to return to my chosen sport of mountain climbing. And he told me, he said, if you want to do it, do it. There'll be a way. And he was right. He developed new legs for himself, went back to rock climbing, and now has made this his life's work to create prosthetics that are so integrated to the human body that he believes in the not distant future they will be able to eliminate all disabilities. Hugh Herr and his lab have developed many exoskeletons. The new one that they're working on, we decided to put Scott Pelley in. So this is a foot ankle exoskeleton and we're basically going to apply virtual muscles on the outside of your body. Our vision is that humans will wear crazy exoskeletal structures that will power walking and running and jumping. Able-bodied people will use these. Right. Why? Because legs are wonderful. I mean, there's a reason nature has given us legs, but we're not very efficient. Most of us, when we run, we breathe very hard. So exoskeletons can make it very easy to, to move, to run, and, and also with less stress in the body. Ready? Mm-hmm. OK. Go. 
the feeling of the exoskeleton that I was wearing is a little bit hard to describe. It's almost like something is kicking me in the heels. Mm-hmm. Yep. You feel more? A lot more. The arms behind him are the artificial calf muscle. It's a boost of power in his calves, and uh, it makes you feel a lot stronger. Because it's really now lifting my heels like my calf would, but my calf's not doing very much. They hope to make this autonomous so there's not all the wires and it's not hooked up to a computer. It's just propelling my feet forward, left, right, left, right. Uh, they're going faster, if you will, than I am mentally. <laughs> oh, that's remarkable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that's a kick in the heels. <laughs> yeah.